Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at is the PlayStation I chipped, uh, when was it, about five videos back now. Um, what I'm going to do today, guys, is C-Sync mod this console. Now, I want to talk a little bit before I get on with a video about C-Sync. Some of you may be saying, well, what is C-Sync? When you connect a console up to a TV through RGB SCART, the way the console sends its sync signal to the TV is through composite video. Now there's a problem with that guys. When you're using modern day LED TVs, the slightest little flaw gets magnified a thousand times, guys, because you know these TVs are so detailed, the slightest little flaw you're gonna see it. Now because these consoles send their sync signal signal through composite video, you start to see crossover talk which is where the video information starts to leak through the sync signal and you start to see that on the screen guys and you'll, you'll, you've probably seen it yourself you see things like checkerboard effect going on you'll see like sometimes jail bars um, and that's really annoying when you're connecting one of these old consoles to a modern day TV now the way you get around that is a C-Sync mod because then all you're doing is sending the sync signal to the TV so all you're sending then is red green blue and a sync signal now that's what I'm going to do today guys now you can probably see a switch on top of the PlayStation the way I do my C-Sync mod is I don't disable composite video guys to, to get C-Sync you have to disable composite video now that's not really a mod to me if you have to disable something to get something else that's not a mod. A mod to me is where you take something and add something to it. That's a mod. So what I do is I add a switch so I can switch between the two. I can switch between composite video or C-Sync. And that's what the switch is for. Now, what I'm also going to show you guys in this video is C-Sync can be a tricky thing to work with. It can be a pain in the arse. Now, what I'll show you in this video guys is what most people run into you know they'll read a guide on the internet and it will tell them use a 75M resistor go straight out the back and you should be fine I'm going to show you that you can't always rely on that guys it may work with some TVs it's not going to work with all TVs uh, and that's what I'm going to show you in the video guys and also at the end of the video I'll show I'll give you a before and after what it looks like and I'll show you some of that crossover talk going on the composite video and then why it's still on the screen where you can see the crossover talk, talk I'll flick the switch to C-Sync and you'll see it just disappear so that's what I'm going to do in this video guys so give me five minutes to set up and I'll get on with it um, what I want to show you in this part of the video is a TV that can cope with a strong C-Sync level and one that can't and how you correct it guys um, what you're looking at here is just a little bit, bit of an experiment. It just makes me easy, easier to follow, guys. As you can see, I've got the C-Sync coming in, which is the bottom one here, and the C-Sync going out, which is the top one, and it's just going straight through. It's not going through any resistors at the moment. It's just going straight through. Now, if I'll power this PlayStation on, what you'll notice is, is this TV at the back, this old TV, can cope with an high C-Sync level. And there you go, it's actually loving it guys, and that's just passed straight through. It's not going through any resistor or anything like that, and it's working fine. Now, let me show you what a lot of people run into guys. This is very common when people do c sync mods. They'll run into this problem. So uh, let me just get changing the inputs guys. I'll swap TVs and show you the difference. I've swapped inputs, I've got the uh, newer old TV if that makes sense, <laughs> up and running. Um, same again, just straight pass through guys, but watch what happens this time. Mm, does not like it one bit. And this is a problem a lot of people run into guys. It's very common when people do seasick mods. Now, in a lot of guides, it tells you to run it through a 75 ohm resistor. So let's try that guys. I'll take the output and plug it into the 75 ohm resistor. Let's have a look at the TV. 
nope still not synced now this is the point where a lot of people would turn around and say my tv doesn't like c-sync which is okay valid because you know they've done everything the guides tell them to do and their tv is still not syncing up but because this is a higher voltage output on the c-sync guys you need to use a higher resistor now watch what happens when i use a 1k resistor put that there let's have a look at the tv and what do you know we have sync now you may be going well that's all well and good what about the other tv behind it does that still sync so let's try that guys, give me a few minutes, I'll set the old TV up, uh, well the one behind and we'll have a look. I've changed back to the uh, older TV behind and still the same, we're now going through a 1K resistor. Let's power on, see if we get a picture on the old one. And yeah we do. So there you go guys, that's... That's how you correct C-Sync when it's not working on a TV. So I hope you enjoyed this little part of the video guys. I just wanted to show you, you know, you can't just take for gospel someone else's guide guys. Because you get this quite a lot, you know, oh it doesn't work on my TV, C-Sync doesn't work. Yeah, it's probably because the C-Sync's a bit too hot for the TV to handle guys and you have to knock it back a bit with a higher value resistor than a 75 ohm resistor so uh, I can get on to the next part of the video now guys um, I'm deciding where to put the switch um, uh, if I look at the back of the PlayStation um, I don't want to put it anywhere near the power board because that would be stupid um, I was thinking of putting it here then I just realized oh what happens if I want to connect to action replay or something um, it's going to foul on that. Um, I can't put it at the back because of the metal shielding. I could cut out the metal shielding, but you're going to see it through the case. I mean, if if, if, if this case wasn't transparent, you know, I, I would probably do that. But you you know, with it being transparent, you're going to see it. And it's going to look jagged edges and look look like crap. So uh, I can't do it anywhere on the back. I can't do it anywhere on the sides because there's no room. And it it would look horrible. Um, so I think where I'm going to put it, guys, is let me just turn this around a bit better so you can see it. Is there's a little space here just underneath where this like post leg thing is. If I put it there, you won't see the switch. And yeah, it should be hidden away. Uh, and then it will look like the console's not been touched in any way. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to put it there, guys. That's that's the place where I'm going to put it. Um, yeah, I've made the switch. Um, I just want to show you it. Um, you can't see it underneath, but there's one K resistors underneath the each ring. Um, so this left one's C-Sync. Middle one's the signal, guys. Basically goes off to the output port of the PlayStation video port and this one's a composite video so uh, I can switch between the two now um, what I've done guys is I realized when I was thinking about this that if I wired a switch directly in if I ever need to take the motherboard out I'm gonna have to take the switch out as well so what I've done is just use the 0.1 inch pin header that I can um, wire in so I can you know quick disconnect if I need to take the motherboard out uh, and that's that's my switch all, all built up guys so, okay guys back again um, tip for you guys if you get yourself a switch uh, and gut it you know take the, in, uh, the innards out what you can do then is use the switch as a template to uh, mark where you're going to put the, uh, the real switch I took my um, Dremel type tool. Basically, what I did is I, you know, screwed this shell. Um, and the best way to do it, guys, is drill an hole, move a little bit down, drill an hole, move a little bit down, drill an hole, move a little bit down, drill, and just go around. And then when you've done that, is just use the outer edge of the switch 
and just go around and break through the holes like that and what what will happen is is you'll use the the metal of the switch uh, and it will use that to cut the square hole out of the uh, as a, so the slide can um, slide along and it does a pretty neat job guys and I haven't fired that yet and it looks fairly okay now what I'm going to do now guys is, is just get my jeweler's files on that and just neat it up so it looks nice and neat and that's the switch hole dealt with in the switch location okay guys switch is in um, I have to use a couple of washers guys um, I don't know if you can just see them under there and the reason for that is because if you look at the switch on the underside I'll try and get down level you can see you know if I didn't use those washers I'd be putting pressure on the actual switch itself so I just used it to space them off and the switch is in so the switch is in all I have to do now is wire up the muffle board guys and um, I'm uh, golden so uh, I'll get on with that guys um, I've actually moved my camera I've actually filmed um, me disabling the composite video so I can um, hook up my switch but what I realized guys is off way from filming because I normally have my camera on the mount there and you can see my light shining down um, was it was too small you couldn't see anything so I decided uh, to prep it first and then show you what I've done guys it's just easier that way so if you look here I've already tinned the pads this here is C-Sync guys and if you look at the video out this is the video out socket um, if you look where am I there if you see that trace goes up and then goes up there that's composite video and as you can see I've cut the trace there so that's disabled composite video now don't worry guys I'm gonna get it back guys because I'm, I'm gonna add that switch and you know I'm gonna have the middle pin of the switch here I'll probably have the left side of the switch on uh, C-Sync and on the top side of the board guys I'll tap into composite video so then I can switch between the two so I'll have C-Sync here composite video here a switch that center pin goes to this point here and then I can switch between the two so yeah I just wanted to show that guys because I realized you couldn't really see anything with my camera being all the way up there um, yeah I have my wires all soldered in uh, as you can see the white one C-Sync the orange one is um, the output signal to obviously the, the output of the AV port on the PlayStation and I've got to do this carefully so I don't rip off the pads if you look here the top yellow wire is where I tapped back into composite video um, because obviously I disabled it on the other side of the board so now what I need to do now guys is decide how I'm going to route these wires what I'm probably going to do is come along and go down and that will be the easiest way to um, to the uh, switch I just want to show you, I've used a little bit of hot snot just to secure those wires down because I don't want them flapping in the breeze. Um, yeah, and I'll be back in a little while guys once I get this wired in. Okay guys, as you can see, we're all back together, we're all wired up. Switches in, I've got my uh, quick connect thing on there so um, you know if I ever need to take the motherboard out again I can take it out without removing the old switch so um, yeah just need to put the lid back on now guys and go and test this out so uh, give me a few minutes I'll be back in a little while console has been um, C-Sync modded I'll show you the switch on the back this allows me to switch between C-Sync and composite video for my sync now the console at the moment guys is outputting the old way which is RGB and composite video. Now what I'm going to do is show you the problem with that guys. The first thing you'll notice 
is if you look at the logo, the Sony logo, you can see like horizontal lines traveling upwards. Now, if you look at the memory card and CD player logo, you can see it even worse. Guys, that's classic composite video looking through the sync signal. Because what's happening, guys, is the TV needs a sync, right? And the way the console sends the sync is through composite video. Now, the TV has to strip that sync out. But what can happen is, on some TVs, like this one, because it's not very good, is it doesn't do a very good job at blocking the rest of the signal that's in with composite video. And this is what you see, this crossover, this crossover interference. Guys, now, now like I said, you may not see this on your TV, because your TV may do a better job than, than this piece of shit. Guys, but you can see what I'm talking about with that crossover talk. Now, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to flick the switch on the console. And what will happen then is it will just be sending RGB and the sync signal, which is C-Sync. And you'll see those wavy lines disappear. So I'm going to count down from three. So three, two, one, gone. So now, all the TV is getting is RGB and sync. And as you can see, all that crossover interference has disappeared. Now what I'm going to do now, guys, is boot Resident Evil and show you what it looks like when you're actually playing a game and you know, you'll see that crossover interference as well. I have Resident Evil 3 in there as you can see, it's a genuine disc, it's not a backup. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm going to boot and show you what it looks like so the first thing you'll notice is those horizontal lines travelling up again I mean just look at the playstation logo there guys you can see it on the red it looks horrible and that's where you tend to see it on bright colours Now if you look at the Capcom logo, can you see like a checkerboard? That's the interference. Now if I show you the Resident Evil logo guys, you'll see the checkerboard interference that I was talking about. Oh, there you go, can you see it? Looks horrible, don't it? Now what I'll do guys, I'll do exactly the same, but this time I'll boot the game in C-Sync. And we'll see if it makes a difference. Same again, consoles in C-Sync mode. Power on. First thing you'll notice, no more wavy lines. Look at that PlayStation logo, looks sweet. If we look at the Capcom logo, that checkerboard effect's gone. And if we look at the Resident Evil logo, the checkerboard's gone from the Resident Evil logo. So there you go guys, that's C-Sync. Sweet. 